Welcome to 100 Yards for Football. Today is our NFL team preview. Today we're going to preview the Cincinnati Bengals out of the AFC North. If you like the video today, please come in and share it. I'm your host, Vincent Turner, and joining me today is the very talented, by way of Florida State University, I could be more blessed. He played 12 years in the league for the Atlanta Falcons. He was a first-round selection in the 1981 draft, 25th overall, my man, Bobby Butler. If you like the video today, please come in and share. We are 100 yards of football. So, Mr. Butler, what do you like about the Cincinnati Bengals? I like everything. You know, <laughs> the, the, the Bengals, you, you know, when, when the day they drafted Joe Burrow and they kept talking about, um, you know, selecting him as the first uh, first pick in the, in, the, in the NFL draft, you know, typically when you when you pick at that spot, you're really looking for teams to lose for a few years, right? Because you need more than that player to make it happen. But I'm going to tell you right now, what I see, <laughs> what I see and what the Bengals have done this year, I'm excited about this, about, about this team, right? The, the, what they did in free agency signings this offseason, what they did in the NFL draft this offseason, Man, I, I, I'm excited. I'm excited. And, and here's, here's what I like, Vincent. You know, a lot of people say a lot of things, right? Mm -hmm. But the Bengals president, Mike Brown, said he was looking forward to building championship teams with Joe Burrows for many years to come. And he said that, and I see right now he's backing that up with what he's done so far just in this short period of time. So – so let's take a look at them. First of all, we got Joe Burrow. I don't have to tell you all about his stats. He's a guy, uh, he, he'll be a hometown hero back home in the state of Ohio, getting ready to be the face of the Bengals franchise, right? He had the most phenomenal year of any college quarterback in the history of the game last season and what he did at LSU. So we all know about that. So they got him. At running back, they got a guy by the name of Joe Mixon, who's a beast. You know, he thousand yard performing the last two years, and he's also a threat catching the ball. So if I got a, a running back who can carry the mail and can catch the ball at the backfield, to me that's a dual threat back because now I don't have to take him off the field in special situations, which – you're going to have to make an adjustment trying to figure out if we're going to pass the ball or run the ball, the personnel you're going to put on defense. So I like that, right? The Cowboys got that same thing with Zeke coming out the backfield, right? So I like Joe Mixon. The wide receiver room, can I say, is just exceptional. With A.J. Green leading the way, right? We're talking about one of the top four receivers in the National Football League. Arguably one of the tops in the league. And some people may put him at the top when he's healthy. And you add T. Higgins to that, you, you drafted him in the second round, first pick of the second round this year. He's going to be a great pro under the leadership of A.C. Green, A.J. Green. It's going to be phenomenal, right? So you got T. Higgins, and then you got, along with that, you got Tyler Boyd, and you got John Ross. Those guys can play. So you got four receivers in the, in the room that can make it happen. Hey, Joe Burrow is going to be happy with that. Now, they need help on the offensive line. But remember this now. Even with the guys that they got, they got Gordy Glenn. They got Billy Price. All right? They got them back from injuries. They got Hakeem Adenjay out of the draft. And they thought he was the best tackle at the senior bowl and got him in the sixth round. That was a steal, right? So here's the thing about offensive line, right? Because you always hear me talk about offensive line and defensive alignment, right? you got to build your team that way from the bottom up, not top down. But here's the thing with offensive alignment. All they need is chemistry. If you can get guys working together, and they can develop chemistry, I'm telling you, this offense 
is gonna 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 be crazy this year. All right, they're gonna be absolutely crazy. Right now, on the defensive side of the ball, this is a scary thing. They got one of the great upfront defenses right now. They remind me of that steel curtain defense that we talked about earlier today. Right, what they got up front. They signed this offseason out of free agency from 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 Houston, DJ Reader. They got him through free agency. He's a three-time Pro Bowler, and you're gonna put him right next to Mr. Geno Atkins, who's a legit All-Pro. And then on top of that, Sam Hubbard ready to come out the box. Sam Hubbard can get digit get double digits and sacks this year. I'm telling you. And then Carlos Dunlap is right there. So that front, that front four right there, hey man, give me that. Give me that any day. We're ready to go. Then at the, in the linebacker room, you got Jermaine Pratt, played well last season, along with Josh Bynes, who coming over for the Ravens. Hey, Vincent, they finna make some noise. And then you add those two veterans with the three rookies that they just got, right? Logan Wilson, inside linebacker from Wyoming. Then they pick up Akeem Davis Gator from App State. Hey, man, the Bengals getting ready to roll. And they're going to do it on both sides of the ball. So I'm just telling you right now, the AFC North better look out because they come, right? Now, in free agency, they did well in the secondary. They signed corner Trey Waynes from the Vikings. And then they took the Vikings slot corner, their nickelback, Mackenzie Alexander. Hey, man, I'm just telling you. And then on top of all that, this offseason, they signed Von Bell from the Saints. Hey, Vincent, Mr. Brown said it. He said he's looking to build championship football teams with Joe Burrows. And what I can see right now, that he is doing just that. Their defense will be solid. Cincinnati will be a playoff team this season. They'll be a playoff team. The only concern I have with them is their offensive line. Like I say, they can build chemistry and build a great offensive line. When they get in camp, all they got to do is start working together and build chemistry. This team is on the rise. So here's what I like. See, when I first, when they first got Joe Burrows, and like I said, when you pick the first player in the whole NFL draft, I'm thinking this is a team that's really got to crawl before they walk. They don't have to crawl before they walk. They won't have to walk before they run. I think when they get to training camp, they're going to come out running, Vincent. And the gate, and they're going to put Cincinnati back on the map. They're going to do something special in, 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 in Cincinnati. So I'm going to say this. Look out, Cleveland. Look out, Pittsburgh, because Cincinnati is coming. I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, when you think about the Bengals, First, we look at Joe Burrow, what he did in college last year. He had the greatest season in any quarterback in college history. Let's go and put it out there. Had some great talented people around him. What did LSU do? 14 players drafted in the draft, the most since 2004 to Ohio State Buckeyes. But what I'm looking at is that if you look at the NFL right now, look at the success of the young teams that are coming up, the Kansas City Chiefs. They got a young quarterback in Patrick Mahomes. The Houston Texans with Deshaun Watson. Philadelphia, Carson Wentz. The Cowboys with Dak Prescott. Joe Burrow, let's be honest, might come into this league better prepared than them. Look at the young man's history. He spent three years at Ohio State. Played behind some pretty good guys there. Dwayne Haskins, who's right now up there playing in Washington. He goes over to LSU. First year, he played average. Second year, they bring an NFL guy in, in Joe Brady. The guy talents and his whole conference level goes to another, another level. And we saying, wow, now he's coming in the NFL? That he's prepared? He's been under a guy, Joe Brady, in a pro-type system? 
But like you said, he came to a team. The Bengals had a lot of problems last year because they had injuries in the offensive line. And defensively, they couldn't stop the run because they had injuries there. But, man, I agree with you, Brother Butler. What they did in the offseason has been very special. And the head coach, Zach Taylor, he's a protege of Sean McVay out there in L.A. Was on the same staff with him, Matt LaFleur, that's in Green Bay. So you look at Joe Burrow, he's coming in a situation with some pieces already in place. If A.J. Green can stay healthy, hello. But Tyler Boyd kind of matured when he wasn't able to play last year in A.J. Green. John Ross, who's one of the fastest players in the league out of the University of Washington, played real well down the stretch. And then they go out and draft the young man. Today it must be Tennessee. I don't know. The great state of Tennessee, the young man out of Oak Ridge. Our producer, same hometown, Jeremiah Daniel Longbrell. I like to call him the T-man, T. Higgins. And you know he's going to come with an attitude because he didn't go in the first round. And then look what they got, the running back position. Giovanni Bernard, who still got some left in the tank. Joe Mixon, while we're talking here, you're right, Brother Butler. We talk about Ezekiel Elliott as being a great back. We talk about Todd Gurley. But the young man out of California by the University of Oklahoma has been putting up numbers on a bad football team. That's right. Now That's right. you got a quarterback who can kind of dictate the show. Cincinnati is going to be dangerous offensively. And then on the defensive side, Geno Atkins just needed some help on the inside. And DJ Reader, a lot of people over there in Houston a couple of years ago were talking about J.J. Watt. They were mm -hmm. talking about Javon Clowney. But they forgot this young man was the guy who was keeping that thing on the defensive side intact for the Texans. And what I like most of all, Brother Butler, you brought up that draft. How you stop the run, and maybe you can help me there. You got to have linebackers that can really move. Mm -hmm. Logan Wilson mm -hmm. at the University of Wyoming. This guy, his career had 421 tackles. Mm -hmm. The other young man out of Appalachian State, Mr. Gaither, mm -hmm. was a tackling machine. Mm -hmm. And they really, really upgraded their secondary. Mm -hmm. Remember, Marquise Alexander out of Clemson. Mm -hmm. Trey Waynes out of Michigan State. Von Bell out of Ohio State. These guys are coming off teams that's played in the playoffs. Right. Mm -hmm. They came one or two, not just are going to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. So this is a football team under Mr. Mike Brown. It's really, really can be dangerous over there in the AFC North. And what that tells me, let's don't get hyped too much on Baltimore right now. Let's don't get too hyped on Cleveland. Let's don't get hyped on Pittsburgh. See, I got the NFL veteran here with me that played 12 years. Y'all watching this video today, y'all better take heave and listen to what he's saying. I'm behind him 100%. The Bengals are going to be dangerous, man. And I'm going to put it to you like this. I don't want to play them because they got some serious skills on both sides of the ball, and they've done real well in the draft. And Zach Taylor, we might be talking about him being the next great thing as the next head coach in the National Football League. And I want to say this. Kudos to Marvin Lewis because even though the Bengals went 2-14 and 14 last year, he didn't leave them bare. Don't you agree, Brother Butler? He did leave them with some talent. So kudos to my man Marvin Lewis. I'm going to tell you this. Cincinnati. They're going to come up. And remember this about the Bengals. The Ashley brothers. <laughs> Bootsy. <laughs> They're from Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. Like the Ashley brothers song. Mm -hmm. Climbing up the ladder. They're going to do some climbing in Cincinnati with Joe Burrow. Final words, Mr. Butler, hey, on the man. Cincinnati Bengals. Hey, hey man, we, we totally agree with this team. And like I said, I think they play off ready right now. Right. Um, I look at them 10 and 6 at the worst, 11 and 5. They, Joe Burr's coming out the gate, and it's not going to be no joke. And I'm telling you right now, you know, a lot of people are going to be trying to figure out at the end of the year what happened. Cincinnati has put it together. 
And so I'm looking forward to this season. I'm looking forward to see them play. And so, um, yeah, I got them 11-5 playoff contender team. That being said, if you like the video today, please come in and share it. I had the legend, the 12-year veteran, All-American at Florida State, by the way, the Atlanta Falcons, he just told you the Cincinnati Bengals might be that team in the AFC North this year. And to all the Raven fans, to all the Brown fans, to all the Steeler fans, pump the brakes. <laughs> Thank you for watching 100 Yards of Football today. Enjoy the 4th of July weekend. I'm Vincent Turner. Joining me is the great Bobby Butler. God bless.